Well, Congressman, thanks for welcoming us back to your office again. It's great to talk to you as, as we have in the past. It's been an interesting month up in, in Washington, D.C. with everything going on with uh, Attorney General Holder and the Fast and Furious scandal and then the news today about the 1070 uh, Supreme Court decision. So I'd like to start with the contempt of Congress sure. issue. Will the House bring that up for a vote on the full floor this week? Yes. Okay. There will be a vote this week. Uh, Eric Holder has brought this on himself. It's not something Congress has really want. We don't really want him held in contempt. We want the information. All right. He's stonewalling. He won't give it to us. He knows that he's obligated to do it, and, he, and so he's going to be held in contempt. I think it will be even a bipartisan vote to hold him in contempt. Now, we didn't get a bipartisan vote out of the House Co the Judiciary Committee, or not the Judiciary Committee, the uh, House Oversight Committee. Um, why do you think that some of the Democrats will come around on the floor? I just have that uh, suspicion that some okay. of them, some of them that will support holding him in contempt because it's so flagrant. Uh, but you never know until the votes are counted how much political pressure Nancy Pelosi puts on the Democrats to toe the line. Uh, but we will see. In any event, he will be held in contempt this week uh, by Congress, the House of Representatives, that is. And what are the consequences of that? Where, where are the teeth in that tiger? Well, first of all, the Senate has nothing to do with this. They're irrelevant. So he will be held in contempt by the House. He will have the uh, ability to have a trial uh, in front of a federal judge in Washington, D.C. In fact, the D.C. U.S. attorney is obligated to prosecute the Attorney General of the United States in a D.C. federal court. You can make of that what you will. But uh, that is the dynamics uh, that will happen uh, hopefully sooner than uh, very soon that this will take place. Will the House ask for a special prosecutor in this case? I sure hope so. I think the Justice Department should not be prosecuting the Justice Department. It, uh, it just doesn't look good, plus they don't have credibility. The Justice Department has lost their credibility on Fast and Furious. They should stay out of it, get a special prosecutor, special counsel, let them prosecute Eric Holder uh, under violation of, of the authority, I mean the violation of failure to abide by the Congress's will to have certain documents. With the President declaring executive privilege on this issue, my understanding as a layperson is that executive privilege can only be held to documents that directly relate to the President. So is that an admission by the President that he was involved in Fast and Furious? Well, that's interesting. Uh, what you say is traditionally true, uh, that it must be memos in the White House between the President and others, generally, in the White House. The president said he didn't know anything about it. All of a sudden now he has cover for uh, Eric Holder. That is a separate legal issue that will come into play before the court where I suspect that Eric Holder's defense will be, you can't prosecute me because I have executive privilege. So we have that dynamic, that constitutional issue will come up in the case. But what you've said is generally, uh, traditionally, what... Uh, uh, executive privilege means it means to protect the White House inner circle so that they can communicate with each other without having to worry about right. disclosing it. And that's valid in, in certain situations, although it doesn't appear to be in this particular place. It's certainly not about national security. That's correct. Uh, although it is violating the national security of Mexico, unfortunately. Well, President uh, Obama, it's interesting, criticized uh, the previous administration for using executive privilege. Mm -hmm. And he even said that when my predecessor used executive privilege, it didn't have anything to do with national security. And uh, it looked bad. That was a paraphrase of what he said. And, and now he's president. He uses it. It's not a national security issue. It looks bad. It seems to me that they're setting a tone, or have been actually for quite some time setting a tone, where they're saying the executive branch of the government is above the law, or that we can make law on the fly. Um, for instance, the order that the, the Homeland Security did last week where they basically just out of nowhere created a new guest worker program. How will that be funded and what's the process for that? My own opinion is the executive branch uh, has now chosen uh, what laws it likes and what ones it doesn't. And those that it does not like, it just doesn't enforce. Uh, I think that's a, that's a violation of it at least the intent spirit, uh, spirit of the law and probably the uh, way that the Constitution was always meant to be. The executive branch, as we all learned in ninth grade civics, was to enforce the law. Uh, Congress writes it, they enforce it. Uh, 
president seems to have gone around Congress and issued his own orders, his own edicts. Uh, that's very disturbing. That's not the power of the president to do so. And what's next? What, ne what is the next law that the president or the administration is going to say, we just don't like it, we're not going to enforce it, uh, in spite of what the law of the land is? Very disturbing. Well, apparently that next one is today. That's correct. <laughs> the, uh, the Supreme Court came down and, and ruled that uh, one segment of the new Arizona law, the part that calls for uh, a police officer when they stop someone for some other offense or they detain someone for some other offense and have reasonable suspicion as to the person's status in the country that they're then required to, uh, to, to ascertain, ascertain that status. The Supreme Court ruled that today. Basically, Arizona is now tasked with carrying out its law. Homeland Security has come out and dissolved all of their um, agreements with the state of Arizona and basically said, don't bother calling us. It looks like uh, another example of the administration refusing to enforce the law. Uh, here we now go to Arizona and the whole issue of really border security and integrity of the United States. Uh, and the administration says we're just not going to enforce this law. We don't like the ruling of the Supreme Court and we're going to uh, do as we will. Very unfortunate situation. Set aside the whole issue of what the law ought to be on immigration and who should come in and whether we should let certain people in or certain people stay. That is a debate we need to have immediately. But set that aside. The issue is whether or not the administration will enforce the law of the land or whether the administration will go its own way. It's going to go its own way uh, when it wants to, and that is what is very disturbing. As a congressman and a former judge, the other two branches of the, of the government, how do you stop something like this? I mean, we have the ballot obviously coming up in November, but is there anything Congress can do between now and November to rein in this out of control administration? On the issue of uh, what we can do specifically in the House, of course all money bills start in the House. That's constitutional. We can prevent funding to uh, different departments of the federal government especially those that choose not to enforce the law of the land. That is an alternative. There's some talk immediately about uh, uh, actually filing a lawsuit and going to the courts to get the court to tell the president, the administration, you're supposed to, you will enforce the law of the land. That's another uh, thing that's being considered. Uh, but of course, that will take a while. Most immediately thing will be uh, five months uh, from now, the American public can really weigh in on whether or not they think the, the administration has uh, violated uh, the Constitution by refusing to follow laws and enforce laws it just doesn't like. That'll be the decision that will be made by the American people. There certainly seems to be pattern after pattern after pattern of, of the Obama administration just choosing to ignore federal law and now choosing to ignore the Congress. Um, if and when there is this trial for General Holder, what are the consequences of if he's found guilty of being in contempt of Congress? Well, it goes straight, of course, to a federal court. A federal judge will have a trial, and the judge will make the legal determination whether the contempt should be upheld or not, and then order specific sanctions. Uh, that's uh, the sanctions really aren't as tough as they used to be to be held in contempt of Congress. Uh, this is a rarely used procedure. Uh, it's been many, many years, I think 1938, since it's gone as far as someone actually being held in contempt of Congress. Uh, so that is a, a very rare proceeding. The sanctions uh, uh, aren't that tough, but basically it's a statement, if he's held in, uh, if it's upheld by the federal court, that the Attorney General needs to turn over documents that Congress is entitled to see. Remember, our goal is not to hold him in contempt. Our goal is give us the information we're entitled to see so we can go through and find out who, what, when, and where regarding Fast and Furious, why Americans died, why, Mex why Mexican nationals died, and who was responsible for it. Mm -hmm. That's what we want.
Now, there was a, a lame attempt last week to blame this on the Bush administration. Is there any documentation that this ever occurred under the Bush administration? No, but uh, that has always been, uh, in the last three and a half years, uh, the rhetoric that comes from the administration has blamed the problems we have on someone else. And uh, it's, of course, uh, an easy pick to blame President Bush. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Uh, that, President Bush is not responsible for Fast and Furious and the people that uh, have been killed because of this uh, decision to help facilitate smuggling guns to Mexico. But we want to find out who it is. Let us find out. Give us the information. We'll find out who it is. We would like to find out who it is. <laughs> Later this week, the Supreme Court will come out and rule on Obamacare. Do you have a, a gut feeling where you think this is going to go and, and what happens from there? Supreme Court probably will take the individual mandate and say it's unconstitutional to force Americans to buy the government product. Mm -hmm. uh, what they do with the rest of the bill, I don't know. There is a, uh, an argument, a legal argument, that the bill does not have a severability clause, which is almost in every piece of legislation, which is the last or next to the last paragraph that says if a portion of this bill is unconstitutional, the rest of it still stands. Mm -hmm. That's not in this bill. Over 2,000 pages, and they didn't add that. So. If they follow precedent, the Supreme Court finding part of it unconstitutional will throw the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. I suspect they may try to find a way to uphold portions of it. Then we have a kind of a mess on our hands. Uh, of course, the Congress House has repealed the whole bill twice. Right. We will continue to do that after January 1st. If the Senate changes and the administration changes, we will repeal it all again. Uh, but uh, that's probably a compromise that the Supreme Court will make. They'll uphold portions of it. Many of those are still like the uh, mandate requiring businesses to uh, uh, pay uh, for health care or pay that, that tax or fine. Uh, that would still be in there. So they could, they could do almost anything, but the individual mandate probably be ruled unconstitutional. Without the severability clause, if they hold part of it constitutional and part of it not constitutional, is that not legislating from the bench? Well, it wouldn't be the first time the courts have legislated from the bench, but uh, I think that they will claim and rightfully so, that they have that authority uh, under uh, the Constitution. I, that's a whole philosophy about the court. Uh, uh, I personally think that they should uh, they find part of it unconstitutional, the whole thing's unconstitutional. But the Supreme Court, is, as we all now understand, the Constitution means exactly what five of them says it means. And that's all it, that's all it takes, whatever the five say it means. Which is all the more reason why we need a change in November so that Obama doesn't have an opportunity to change that five to the other side. Well, uh, I always tell people that uh, one of the most uh, legal and constitutional powers of the president is to appoint federal judges, all of them, from the district court uh, to the circuit court to the Supreme Court. And uh, that is a reflection. Generally, those judges are a reflection on the philosophy that the president has, whoever he is. Voters need to keep that in mind when they go to the polls in November as to who they, what philosophy they want federal judges to have, lifetime appointments, as we all know. We talked before about your uh, bill to bring the border security, bring the National Guard to the border. Has there been any movement on that? There has not been. The bill is still pending. Uh, if it's not addressed this year, of course, it'll be refiled after the new Congress takes uh, effect in January. Okay. Anything else that is important on your burner right now that you'd like to, to tell us about? We're still working to uh, get uh, some of the equipment from Iraq, uh, the Humvees, night vision equipment, and uh, drones, uh, rather than have all those just stored someplace, move down to the Texas-Mexico border, southern border of Mexico. We're doing this in a bipartisan way. Henry Cuellar from Laredo uh, is also on a letter with me to support the, uh, this movement, along with the Texas border sheriffs, who most of them are Democrats. Uh, so it's a border security issue, as you mentioned at the outset. Uh, that is the issue that we have to address and fix first. But Congress does have to uh, uh, be, be involved and, and fix the immigration problem because it is not going away. It's getting worse, and we uh, need to just have an honest debate about it and fix some of the problems that we're all aware of. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to sit down and to have you talk to the readers of Texas GOP Vote. And I hope we can do it again after the Obamacare decision comes down from uh, the Supreme Court. 
and uh, see where we go from there. It's going to be an exciting week. So exciting summer. <laughs> <I think. laughs> All summer, that's true. Okay, well, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Bob.